Hey, what's Ta-da! up, guys? Oh, this is so cool. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Welcome to Supercharge Your Website with SEO and Video. <laughs> I'm your host, Stephanie Liu, with my co-presenter, Daryl Stern. Boop, did I get it right? Yes, I did get it right. Oh, we're going to do the... Wait, I'm doing it oh. Boom, there we go. <laughs> Hey guys, glad to be here. Very, very cool. So if you guys are already here in the webinar, kudos to you, high five to you boop, for being the early birds. Thank you so much for being a part of this webinar. So if you're here, go ahead and leave a comment. Tell us where you are viewing from. I'm here in San Diego. Daryl, where are you at? I am in amazing Aurora, Colorado. Yay, that's awesome. So you're only an hour away. Yeah, we're only, yeah, I'm in mountain time, just over mountain the time. road. There's little things called the Rocky Mountains to the east of you. That's where I am. A okay, bit. very cool. And Terry, thank you so much for joining us from the Bay Area. What's up? What's up? So amazing to have you here. So what we have planned for you today is we're going to talk about how you can supercharge your website using SEO and video. So let's go ahead and get started. Dun, 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 dun. Let me go ahead and see how I could actually share my stuff with you. So one second. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, P.S. By the way, Terry um, and everyone else that's watching right now, you will have access to a workbook to follow along with all of the amazing content that Daryl and I are going to be giving you today. So it should be under the file section under resources. Let us know if that doesn't pop up for you. It should be already sharing with you. So let me know how that goes up. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Woo-hoo. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my video if that's cool with you guys. All right, okay, so supercharge your website with video and SEO. Again, as I mentioned, I'm Stephanie Liu and we have Daryl Stern here. So to go ahead and get started, if you're relatively new to the phrase SEO, SEO is actually a shortened shortened abbreviation for search engine optimization. Now, the really fancy way of saying this is that it's the process of getting traffic from the free, organic, editorial, or natural search results on search engines. That means when you go on Google and you're typing in how, you know, what is SEO or how do I go live on Facebook, Anything that shows up on the search results page organically, that's all SEO. Well, it's been SEO so that it shows there at the very top. And that's definitely something that you want to have for you, your brand and your business. That way you could go ahead and stand out. Now, this this definition that we have here from Search Engine Land is very, very technical. In fact, I'm actually a really big fan of Daryl's explanation in terms of what SEO is. And so, Daryl, I'm going to let you read it in your own voice. (laughs) You let me read in my own voice. Okay, that's awesome. Uh, so my definition of SEO and, and in terms of the philosophy of it is we're not optimizing for Google, okay? Google is just an algorithm and its job is to give us the best answer to our question. If Google didn't do that and you search for something and all the information that you saw was totally irrelevant to what you asked for, Google would be out of business. So we are not optimizing for Google. We are optimizing for the people who use it. You are the solution to the problem. So what is the question? Very true. Okay. So there are a couple of things that comes to making sure that your website is ready and good to go in terms of SEO. In fact, there's four things to keep in mind. The first one is really making sure that your content is quality content. You might have heard the term before of keyword stuffing, where if you go to a website, they might be saying the phrase SEO a bajillion times, but if you actually read the title and the content itself, it doesn't flow and it doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, if you do that type of keyword stuffing, or if you're trying to create articles that don't really provide a ton of value, value, you will get dinged by Google. So keep that in mind. So content is very important. The other piece that's really important in terms of ranking really high in the search engine Uh, results is architecture. And that means when you have your website, making sure that the page loading time is really fast. So if you have a lot of images on your website, you want to make sure that they're compressed to a smaller file size without losing its quality, right? Now, there's other things that 
that's really going to help you out in terms of SEO is making sure that your site is secure, that you have a site map and a URL structure that is definitely going to go ahead and keep in mind what your targeted keywords are for your particular website. So let's say, for example, that your website is about, um, let's say, car donations. You want to have car donations in the title tags and the body copy, bolded, any of that good stuff, right? So HTML over to the right hand side, this is where we talk about titles, descriptions, structures, headers, interlinking, all of that stuff is super helpful. Now I will tell you that these first three factors, content, architecture, and HTML, this is very, very technical, but that is not what we're going to get into today. I promise you, we're actually going to go ahead and get you on the fast track when it comes to SEO. And that's where we're going to talk about what you can do off the page to go ahead and boost up the authority for your website by using video. So I hope that's really helpful for all of you so far to give you a sense of what we're going to be going through on today's webinar. So having said that, let's talk a little bit about why video matters. Now, when I was pulling all of this content up earlier this week, I was actually really quite surprised by how powerful video has been coming up in the ranks so in terms of, of by the numbers, what I found really interesting was that there's this article about 1.8 million and it says how many words a single minute of video is, is equated to. So if we say that a picture is a thousand words, then imagine the power of video. So you notice here that even when I'm talking to you throughout this webinar, I'll just pop in and in and out with the webcam just so you can get a feel for who I am and build that know, like, and trust factor. Other great things about using video in your overall marketing is the fact that if let's say if you were to go ahead and drop a video into your email marketing, statistics show that you'll most likely have a 200 to 300% click through rate, which is absolutely amazing. And this is actually something that I tested out in ConvertKit when I was sending everyone emails about, hey, this is coming up. I actually didn't put a video, but I actually put a gift because that's kind of like my thing. And it's funny because a ton of you actually responded back to me and said, I love this gift. So that's amazing. Now, the other great thing about video is the fact that customers report that when they watch a product video, 90% of them are more likely to go ahead and purchase that product. And I want you to pay attention to this because listen, if you are promoting an upcoming sales event, a course, webinar, any of that good stuff, having video is going to be very helpful in getting your buyer from the consideration pays phase into the purchasing phase, right? On top of that, video helps out with 80% conversion. So I absolutely love this. You could catch the feel and the design of what it is exactly that you're, you're going to be selling into your actual product by using video. In fact, we do a lot of Facebook video ads for a lot of my clients. So if you're actually using video right now in any of your marketing, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, Wistia, any of that good stuff, go ahead and leave a comment and just say yes. That'll let Daryl and I both know that you are using video as a part of your marketing strategy. So having said that, the highest consumed content that we typically find online is the fact that videos, in terms of completion rate, videos have a completion rate of 55%. Now, this is especially true when it comes to Facebook Live and simply because of the fact that you could actually engage with your viewers. And so if you have a question, I could bounce off of you. I could answer it. I could follow up all of that great stuff. But when it comes to podcasts, it's very much one way. Sometimes you'll just listen in the car and it's very passive. But if you're doing video, then it's something that you could replay back. It's something that you can engage with, especially if it's going to be a live video. So I found this to be really, really powerful. Daryl, did you want to add anything about the highest consumed content? Well, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things that we're going to get into in just a couple of minutes, but adding a video to your website, right, to your landing page also keeps people on that page longer. That lowers something that's called your bounce rate. Your bounce rate is when someone comes in and just leaves the page. They don't take any mm -hmm. action. They glance at it and they leave. Add a video and all of a sudden you've got people staying on your page a minute, two minutes, Google sees that, says, wow, this is a really much better page than other people have. And you rank higher just by having video incorporated into your websites and your landing pages. 
Yes, thank you so much. And Jen Evangelista, so great to see you here. Let us know how you are doing and where you're watching from. So now let's go ahead and talk about how video can help your business. And to go ahead and kick that off, Daryl, it's all you. Let's go ahead and talk about your case study on how video can help your business because you have an amazing, amazing story. Well, yes, I I was I was trying to crack the formula on how to use media and use someone's knowledge uh, to create an SEO masterpiece, to totally drive traffic, to totally drive social media engagement, to totally try and drive this all at once. So a little bit of background about me. First off, I'm a Star Wars fanatic, as you see behind me. And then Stephanie, I guess you got to ship this, you know, over to me presenting now. Um, yeah. So I'm a Star Wars fanatic. I believe in the mantra of uh, Yoda from the Empire uh, Strikes Back. Do or do not. There is no try. So to bring you up to date on me, I grew up in the theater. I grew up as an actor. I grew up as a playwright and a screenwriter and directing theatrical productions. Okay. So at the same time, I was uh, my father was a philosophy professor. He taught me cognitive thinking and, et and etymology, you know, the history of words and all these different kinds of things. So my my life has come full circle and I created a methodology called stern storming, which is this, you are the solution to the problem. So what is the question? All the knowledge that you have inside of you, all the experiences, all the things you can teach and demonstrate are things that need to be out there in the world that can bring people into you. So there's two parts of stern storming. One is inbound, which is writing emotional copy to bring people into your landing pages. We're not going to cover that so much today, but it's in your worksheet and you all, you guys are all invited to do a stern storming uh, session with me one on one. But the other part of that is content marketing, demonstrating what you know. So I'm going to show you guys right now how I, how I took a local auto mechanic here in Englewood, Colorado, and literally turned him into not just a triple the size profitable business, but also how he is actually becoming a social media influencer just because of everything that he knows. So I'm going to take you step by step through this. And if you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to turn the camera off now. There we go. Beep. And I'm going to turn on the sharing of my screen. I'm going to share my window. I'm going to share this window over here. Bank. Okay, here we go. Ba, ba, ba. Okay, so you should now see on your screen this uh, the website for Saul's Automotive. He is located in Englewood, Colorado, and he had known me for about three years, and he contacted me one day about a year and a half ago, and he said, let's get stern, which is my little hashtag. Let's get serious about marketing me. So the first part of SEO is determining what I could call what your anchor pages are. In other words, what are the main services that you provide? What are the main things that you can do? So we can create a site map, right? A set of landing pages that specifically are targeting a very specific thing. So on Saul's website, if I scroll down here, we actually created 60 landing pages, one for each and every type of car that there is. Now keep in mind that what we're trying to rank for and we're, we're trying to get traffic for is someone who wants a car repair or any kind of problem or a truck repair with a Cadillac, a Buick, everything from there to a Maserati, to a Ferrari, to a Porsche, right? So we literally created 60 different pages that all branch off off the homepage that are literally all optimized for repairing that type of car in that location. Wonderful. Now we've got our, our SEO map. So when we would work together, it would be the same kind of thing. Now, I don't care if you're a healer or you sell makeup or whatever the heck it is that you do. There are different categories, right? There are different parts to what you do that all need a main landing page to pull people in. So how do we then reinforce that landing page and get that landing page to go up higher and higher and higher on Google? What I did next, and here's the main part of how video can drive your marketing and your SEO is this. I went down to visit with Saul once a week and we filmed just literally right on my phone with a little lapel mic hookup. Saul talking about the types of cars that he fixes about and not just talking about fixing them, but actually showing you how he fixed it. So the difference between what, what, what most people are doing normally is they have a YouTube run channel running over here, or they have a 
podcasts and they're just putting it on their website, just the audio clips of it. But here is the difference. I had each and every one of his videos transcribed. Okay. So every single word out of his mouth is written out on these separate individual blogs and they're called video blogs in, um, in WordPress. And then every time that he mentions a Chevy Camaro, guess where that link goes? It goes back to his main page about Chevy Camaro. This is another very important part of SEO that I don't see very many people doing. It's called indexing. So let's say you're at the public library and there's a pamphlet about what you do written by one of your competitors. And next to that is a book. It's the ultimate resource, resource you know, on, on car repair written by Saul Reisman. And in the back of the book, you see something called an index. It's really funny when I talk about books. I'm like, does anybody know what a printed out book is anymore? But we used to use these back in graduate school and college, you know, back in the 80s and 90s. So there's an index, right? And in that index, let's say it says the word breaks. And when it says the word breaks, it refers to all these other pages, right, in the book where that author is talking about that particular topic. So what we've done here is we've created an interweb. We've created a little mini internet right? All within his website, all within these different, uh, all by cross-linking all these different blogs. So that's step one, okay? The next part of that is when we combine those videos and all of the landing pages, and this is what happens on Google. So let's search for Bentley Repair in Englewood, Colorado. As you see, not only does he come up number one on the Google Maps, he comes up number one for his, uh, for his landing page, and his video comes up at the same time. Now, what most people don't know is that, or you may know, is that Google owns YouTube. You, you with me? So since Google owns YouTube, they want videos to come up on their search results because they make money off of that through Google advertising. And because they own it, they want more people are likely to click on a video than they are about anything else in any type of search result. Search result. So again, we're talking about a combination of having landing pages that are optimized and then a bunch of video blogs that, that reemphasize that particular um, type of thing that you can do. So start thinking about this. How, write down 10 things today, and this is in my worksheet, that you can demonstrate, that you can show people that you know how to do, right? And then have on your website a main landing page that is, uh, that is the main offer, the main inbound page for that. Let, now, here's another story. So Saul, we built out all this. We have over 130 of these. And then Saul said, but I don't come up for free estimate of car repairs in Denver. And I said, you can come up for almost anything you want now because we have so much material about repairing cars. All we did was add an extra page titled <laughs> free auto repair quote and estimate in Denver, Colorado. And sure enough, within 24 hours, he came up Number three, everybody following me? You getting, you getting the picture here of how to create an interview? So let's go one step further. In Sternstorming, we get very specific with your, with your marketing. One thing that I, that I say all the time is stop talking in generalities, right? I can heal the world. This is great for everyone. It's very powerful. That's not specific enough. So in our search to create videos that would then drive people to him, we created a video called We Can Fix the Jeep Death Wobble in Englewood, Colorado with a lifetime guarantee. Now, first off, let me examine that. Let's examine this step by step. First off, Jeep is something that a lot of people here have here in Colorado. A lot of people drive Jeeps. They drive up into the mountains on their four wheelers. The next thing is the death wobble. The death wobble is a real problem with Jeeps. They can, the steering wheel can get out of alignment. It can crack. You can go spinning off the road and literally you can die if you don't get your Jeep maintained. So this particular video has gone semi-viral. He has literally over 41,346 views off of this video. There are comments from not just here in Colorado, but throughout the world. He has fixed over $250,000 uh, worth of Jeeps just from this one video. So I'm hoping this is making sense, guys, in terms of actually looking at, well, what can you specifically do? What can you specifically demonstrate? How specific can you get? 
And in our stern storming session, we're going to go through that. We're going to talk about it as you keep all those things that you take for granted, um, that you take for granted that you know how to do are a gift to the world. Okay. So I want to go into a little bit of analytics. Okay. This is called Google Webmaster Tools. Now, a lot of people talk about Google Analytics. If you've never heard of Google Webmaster Tools, it is a very, very important tool to use because here's what it does. This is the search results for Saul's Automotive. There are two main columns here. One is for clicks and one is for impressions. Now, the clicks are, of course, very important because you see how much traffic you're getting. But as I go down here deep, deep, deep on this level, I look and I see that he comes up for, let's say, suspension shops in Denver. Now, he's only had one click, okay, and only 22 impressions, but he comes up number 7.3. This reverse engineering, looking at what you actually come up for and how many impressions you get, and you can even go down to the, you know, the 100th listing actually tells you what to blog about next. It actually tells you what to shoot a video about next and write a blog about next because these are actual searches that people are conducting that then you are the, that then, you know, people are searching for that you don't quite come up for yet. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're in the list, you're in the running, but you're nowhere near page one. But we know that people are specifically putting together words like Colorado emission testing stations. Everybody got that? We'll take a look at, we'll take a quick look at Saul's uh, YouTube channel. Okay. In the analytics, as we can see, he's had uh, 24,767 minutes of video watched just in the last uh, 28 days. And anybody who has a calculator, can pull that out and tell me how many days or weeks long worth of videos uh, that is in minutes. But here's where it gets important. The average view duration again is two minutes and 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 thirty seconds and and forty nine seconds. Now people tell me, well, you know, but people have a short attention span. They won't watch a video. How long should a video be? It should be pretty short. Yes, in some circumstances. But if I asked you, what was your favorite movie or what was your favorite book or what was your favorite novel, right? You would probably tell me, well. Star Wars. And I would say, well, would you sit through all Star Wars movies a hundred times? Say, yeah, I love it. Star Wars, Lord of the Rings. I love it. It's five hours long. So what's missing? It's the story. It's a value of the content. It's the storytelling in the content that always has to be there. So I'm going to show you how this shifts over now into social media. So believe it or not, these videos Stephanie's chat with me. Uh, these videos have now all been uploaded into Saul's Facebook page. So I'm, this is all in the worksheet that I'm giving you guys today. You create a video, you have it transcribed, you put it on your blog, you optimize it on YouTube. Then you come over to Facebook and you upload it directly in to Facebook. So guess what? I forgot to mention that we didn't just do this once or twice. Saul has 130 videos that we completed within an eight month period of working together. Okay. And again, this is, this is talking about all the different ways in demonstrating, uh, again, content marketing, traditional marketing is telling people you're a rock star. Content marketing is showing that you are one. So I want to show you now with all this media real quick, what I do on a weekly basis for Saul. If I go into his video library, so I'm under publishing tools and I go to video library, I can go back, let's say back to August, uh, back in July. Okay. When we did one about the Audi R8 is the same car as the Lambie, as the Lamborghini on the inside. And if you click on that video, you can create a new post using the same video. Now, a lot of people make a video, they post it once or they do something once and then they go, well, nobody got anywhere. Nobody did anything. But you, that's not, you can't just post something once. I'm sure Stephanie will tell you and expect, you know, that that's it. You can reuse your content. So here's where optimization comes in. And Stephanie's going to get into this in a bit as I wrap up my part of this. But if I start typing in Lamborghini, right? 
57,746 people like Lamborghini. I'm going to tag that. I'm going to also put in, I'm going to put in Denver. I'm going to put in auto repair. I'm going to put in Englewood. So I'm tagging the posts okay, with other news magazines, organizations, products, other pages that are related to what he's talking about. Oh, and we have to use Audi to you, A-U-D-I. Now, in, in Saul's case, there's also local automotive dealerships and parts dealers and all that kind of stuff that he uh, deals with as well. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to post. I'm going to put him in there. I'm always going to check in at the location. I'm going to make this particular. Now, the other thing, too, is you can schedule posts. I'm sure you guys know this. I'm going to schedule this for Wednesday at about 3.36 p.m. So that video that was shot a while ago is going to come back out. So it's going to come back out in a couple of days. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the screen sharing. I'm going to turn back on my camera and finish and tell you the rest of this amazing story. So obviously, yes, Saul has grown from a forty to $60,000 a year business to over $100,000 I'm sorry, forty to sixty thousand dollars a month to over a hundred thousand dollars a month. And his testimonial video about the work that we've done talks about how he gets calls from Hawaii, as far away as France, with people asking him about Jeep. But here's the next thing that happened to him: he got selected to be in the Forbes 35, 30, 35 under thirty-five in Tel Aviv. They flew him over to the other side of the planet to so he could meet up with the people from Google and Apple that are developing the next, the next type of technology for driver safety and for car safety. He was featured in the SEMA. Uh, SEMA is the big auto par automotive parts show that happens in Las Vegas every year. And he was featured in their magazine and now he's gonna be featured in another one. So now we get to do something even more. Saul's new series of videos is about he wants Apple and Google and these other companies to now work together to create better safety for people on the road because the technology is there, but a lot of those companies just aren't working together. They're competing with each other. So what we've actually done now is create his influence. He's now able to go beyond just the services that he provides and the products that he provides and the great customer service, but he's now able to let his voice be heard and stand on his platform and change the world. So there's so much more to Sternstorming. I can't wait to go Sternstorming with each and every one of you. We're also doing a live workshop. It's in the resources link on September 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Stephanie has so much more to show to share with you. I am an open book when it comes to, um, to digital marketing. So I'm going to make Stephanie the presenter right now. But I hope you get, and you'll see in the sheet, there's a specific order to this. But beforehand... I'm going to make Stephanie the presenter. Da -da -da, Stephanie is now the presenter. Woohoo! Okay, so Daryl, that was amazing. That was really, really inspiring. I love the fact that you were able to go ahead and create a new page for a client. And within, was it 24 hours, you said you were already number three in the search results? Exactly. Well, and that's because we already had built our tree, you know, our web. We planted our roots in the ground. We had connected everything together. It's all I, I do an SEO exercise where we all close our eyes and pretend that we're a tree and all of the knowledge and experience that we have, all the adventures we had in life. You know, every all the people that have inspired us are all our roots. And it, the deeper the roots go, the bigger the tree can get, the more people that it reaches out to. Very cool. Okay. And so before we get into Facebook video optimization, there are a number of questions that people have been putting into the chat box. And so I'm just going to go ahead and go through them because this is where your genius shines. And so Jen Baker was saying with all of those, those indexes that you have on the homepage, remember you said you had 60 plus cars on there. Do, do you get dinged by Google for having so many links down there? No. Okay. So here's the, so here's the, the answer to the question is no, you can't put, I fix Ford in Englewood, Colorado and copy and paste the same content and just put in Mitsubishi. Th like you can't copy and paste. This is not a template that's just being cut. Each page is custom written, has 100% original content 
And on the Highlands Ranch Colorado page, I'm talking about Highlands Ranch and what that town is like and what they do. And on the Buick page, I'm talking about, we actually went and researched and found a YouTube video on the history of each and every type of car that there is. So on each landing page, there's a different video and different content. So does that answer your question? This is not, this is not copy and paste. This is every single one has to be original content. Yeah, I think what she was referring to is that on Saul's homepage at the very bottom, you had all of the different car types. And mm -hmm. so you're saying that when you have each of those categories that links out, it branches out, right? To use the same analogy mm -hmm. that you had, it branches out, but then all of the other content folds underneath that, right? Right. It's like this. So we have one landing page that says I fix Ford, right? I fix Ford cars. Then he has about a dozen video blogs that talk that show him fixing a Ford. You get it? Now, every yep. time he says Ford, I'm repairing a Ford, it goes back to that page. The link goes back to that main landing page. Okay, great. And then Terry, Terry's question was, so the trick is to upload videos. So the trick is just do videos, transcription, and indexing. And I know there's more to it, such as keyword research, but you also showed us the SEO webmaster tools uh, or the Google Webmaster Tools. Is there anything else that you want to add for Terry? Well, to, to answer your question, Terry, it, it, it's when you get these videos done, they have to be about, one thing about Saul I want to explain, he's extremely articulate. I hardly have to edit him. If you go watch that, that death wobble video, he goes on for six minutes and 30 seconds without pausing, without saying, um, well, basically any, any smooth as silk, the guy really knows his stuff. So understand that it's not just a trick of, well, I'll just talk about this for five minutes and then talk about that and transcribe it and boom and done, right? This is actually you demonstrating your knowledge. It can be and should be, you know, rehearsed. And then yes, once you get those transcriptions back, you do have to do a lot of editing because you'll notice that the way you speak about something doesn't always look so good when you write it out on paper. You've got to kind of transcribe it and change it, you know, into, you know, into, into how you would present that on stage. But what I'm getting at is it's consistency and persistence pays off with a plan in mind. So we can literally sit down and let's say, you know, 50 things about something. Well, guess what? We've got a plan for the next year, one a week mm -hmm. or, you know, two a week or half a year of content to produce. And now we know exactly what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. So having an editorial yeah. calendar yeah. is yeah. super helpful. Super helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Okay, I think cool. my audio is on your, on your. I can hear you just fine. You got a little wobbly there. No, I was so, thinking I can hear myself through yours. yours. So I got, I, I got a question from Jen that I see. It says, so it's okay to upload videos instead of doing live broadcasts all the time. So, Stephanie, you can help me answer this. Live video is brand new. Live video just started in what, 2016? Like, yeah, but YouTube has true. been around a decade. And it's always really funny. Everybody's going live on video, so everyone's live videoing now. I'm old school. I go back to the 90s, you know, in terms of making websites and HTML and all that kind of stuff. So, yes, the live video is very powerful, right? As Stephanie will tell you, sure, live videos are the most amazing things that I've ever seen. But investing in making media that is well, that is produced, it has a beginning, middle, and end. It has special effects. It has lower thirds. And it's fully produced. And remember this, YouTube videos sit there and are searchable, right, all the time. Like he's always going to come up and that video is always going to be there. Whereas, you know, on Facebook, Zip, like there goes my post, right? In other words, I do this live video and it goes on down and there's new videos and new things to watch and new things coming out every day. I hope that answers your question. Both are very valuable and they serve, you know, different purposes. Okay, cool. So what I was trying to say is that I think my audio is feeding back through your computer and then back into your mic. Okay. So let me turn down, let me turn down the volume of you. Okay. <laughs> Cool. Um, and then the other question that we had was, so Facebook slash Google doesn't care that you have duplicate content. And that was from Jen Baker. And so my, my tidbit on that is that Facebook and Google are two separate things and they're in competition with each other. A few years ago, Daryl, you probably remember this. 
they're trying to say that Facebook search res search results was going to take over Google, but that's definitely not the case because Facebook has expanded their attention. Is there anything else that you want to add about duplicate content on different platforms? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, okay. One, yes, Facebook and Google are competing companies. Facebook wants your videos to be uploaded directly into Facebook, right? They will rank those higher. They want more because otherwise, because if you notice, if you ever notice now, what they've done is when you click on a video, the, it will jump and go to YouTube. Well, guess where all that traffic went? It just went to YouTube. Google's making more money. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the business end of it, you know, side of it and all that kind of stuff. So I always say this, focus on the message, right? The media creation first. Don't focus on the social first, focus on the media creation first. Cause with that media, you can put your YouTube video demonstration on Pinterest and on YouTube and then upload it. And now you can even upload it to you to LinkedIn. You and that's me? exactly what I was going to say. I was going to say, there you go. So, you know, I mean, so, so creating the, the investing in really great, you know, it doesn't have to be, this was all done on a phone with a, with a lapel mic, you know, clipped on to solve. That's it. No, no other big lighting kits or special effects. I use Dropbox to bring them in and iMovie to do all the editing. So very cool. I will even also tell you guys, you know, if you aren't as, as articulate as Saul is in terms of recording a video, there are apps that you could get on your phone. Like my favorite is teleprompter. And what I do with my clients is I just put their script in a text file, copy paste it into the app. And then they're actually holding the video flip the camera and then they're able to read it line by line. So it's really impressive. You guys, there's a ton of options out there. I would say doing video today is so much easier than trying to do it maybe like five years ago. Right? Well, yeah. Okay. And also start with something that, you know, start with something that you love to talk about. What I always hear is someone's telling me this fantastic story about something they know how to do. And I always say, well, stop telling me, let's tell everyone else. Right. Very and true. we have the ability to do it all in our HD live broadcasting phone thing. It's in our pocket. <laughs> we have a production studio in our own pockets. Everyone oh. keep that in mind. So thanks everyone for that piece. Let's talk a little bit about Facebook video optimization and why it's important. So for those of you who don't know, do you know that Facebook has released a new tab called Facebook Watch? If you've heard about Facebook Watch, go ahead and leave the comment yes in the chat box. It's really neat. I'm, I'm wearing one. Oh, wait, not that kind of watch? No. <laughs> yeah, okay, Daryl, I'm still coming through on your on your computer. Yes, I'm still on my computer, yes. No, I could hear myself coming through your speakers. Here you go. Okay, let me see what I can do. Okay, cool. Um, so Facebook Watch, Savannah, thank you so much. Um, it's If you go into Facebook, there's a new tab called Facebook Watch, and I'll show you that in just a little bit. So what Facebook Watch is, it's across all platforms, your mobile, your desktop, you could actually watch high production value videos, and they're all categorized by topics. Now, why is this super important? Well, it's the fact that Daryl just told you that by tagging in Facebook, you get extended reach. So now with Facebook investing in other people to create content, it's going to be super important for you to make sure that your content on Facebook is also optimized. It's also the fact that why do you love Facebook? You love Facebook because if a friend of yours shares an article, if they comment, any of that good stuff, you're getting engagement from it. So unlike things like Netflix, where you're binge watching, let's say on, I don't know what's out there right now, <laughs> like on House of Cards, or if you're binge watching on HBO, Game of Thrones, sometimes you're watching that by yourself. But Facebook gives you this platform, this community, where you could get a customized list of what your friends are watching as well. Narcos, thanks, Jen. <laughs> I was like, what is new on Netflix right now? So it's engagement as an experience. So having said that, let me go ahead and let me share a window on my screen. Let me go ahead and pop this up real quick. This is the Wait. Facebook Watch tab. If you could see this, Savannah, you'll notice here that at the very top, there's this big marquee image. And what is it that you see up there, you guys? Did you just see it? It went by really fast. It was a live video. Let me go ahead and go back real quick. So if I go through this, you have regular videos, 
But if I go back, the first one that popped up for me was a live video. And this is why it's super important for you guys. So you could also take a look at today's spotlight. What's going on there? News this week. What's popular? What friends are watching? So again, for my captivators, for my students that are doing live video and broadcast, this is super important for you to have a very eye-catching title that's very descriptive and it's super optimized for Facebook. Also, what's most talked about? Again, engagement as an experience, okay? And then in case you missed it, see, they're all doing episodes now. And this, this lights me up and it makes me super duper excited because when I talk to the captivators, we do the 10 by 10 formula, which is write 10 frequently asked questions that you get about your product, your service, or your business, and then write 10 should ask questions, questions that people should be asking about your product that they don't know. Take those 20 ideas, organize it just like the way that, that Daryl was talking about indexing, categorizing, all that stuff. And then you can actually break it out into episodes. So let's say you have a course on um, building your brand. What's the first thing that you should do, right? So that should be season one and then season two. So take that into consideration. I love the fact that there's 10 minutes or more. Just the fact that you get your own category on Facebook for, for having a video that's longer than 10 minutes blows my mind completely. So this is Facebook Watch, and most of you can see this. You can see what the latest episodes, and you can even save your episodes as well. So Savannah, I hope that just kind of blew you away, and I hope that you're super excited about that. All right, so let's go ahead and go back. Daryl, do you have a question? <laughs> Are you just excited as much as I am? Oh, you're on mute. My hand, so I figured out what to do. I'm muting oh, myself to talk, so okay. it's not gonna make that loop anymore. So what I wanted to tell you is what, what many people don't know or might not know is that you can edit your video, the description, the tags of your live videos after you're live. Go back into your live and edit it. And I'll tell you something crazy about Saul. When he was in Las Vegas at the SEMA show, he, he was on the trade show floor. I taught him how to go live. He buzzed me and said, I'm at Continental Tire, right? We were back here on his Facebook page, watching his live and editing the post while he was streaming live, adding all the tags and then saving it. He was still streaming and Continental Tire called him, their $7 billion international tire company, you know, to start working with him. So just a little thing that there's, some, like as you're talking about, there's some engineering that you can do even after you're live to even to optimize it. Yes. Love it. Love, 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 love. Okay. So having said that, here are some Facebook video success um, things that you should keep in mind. So first off is title. The main purpose of a title is to garner attention and entice people to watch your video. So make sure that your title is descriptive. There's nothing more that just kind of like I ignore in the news feed when people are just they just say like, oh, guess what happened? And then it's a video. No, I actually kind of want to know what it is exactly that you're talking about. You have to keep in mind in terms of your viewers, video consumption behavior, give them as much, give them as much descriptions as necessary in order to really pull them in. So that's where you go into number two, the description, the who, what, where, and why. And this is something that I teach my captivators in the Lights Camera Live course is that you want to go ahead and say like in this episode, if this is what you're doing, let's say in a live broadcast, in this episode, here are the three things that you're going to learn, one, two, and three, right? And let's say you do a live broadcast and then later on you wanna go back and edit it because you mentioned an episode resource, you absolutely can do that. That's exactly what Daryl had said too. Third is engagement. So videos on average, they get 135% more engagement versus photos. So definitely step out of that sea of sameness and start stepping up your game. Start using video, whether it's live video or recorded video, you can absolutely do that. Again, don't forget the app that I mentioned, the iOS store, I'm pretty sure that the Android store has it as well. A ton of apps that you could use as a teleprompter, okay? And then last but not least for Facebook video success is definitely captions. So 85% of Facebook videos are watched without sound. So it's gonna be super helpful for you to go ahead and put in captions because when people are scrolling through their news feed, if you go ahead and you put in the captions there, people will start to realize, oh, okay, great. This is what Savannah is talking about. This is what Jen is gonna be covering. This is what Terry is, is talking about this week on his show, yada, yada, yada. 
Okay, so having said that, let's go ahead and see what else I have planned for you. Let me go ahead and show you how you can actually optimize your Facebook videos. So first off, hey, Daryl, if you could unmute real quick and let me know if you could see my screen. Yep, you can. Okay, cool. All right. So this is the, the video page on my actual Facebook page. And if you notice here is that I have a featured video. Now, this is really cool. If you want to drive traffic here, it takes up a whole space on your page. And then from there, you could go ahead and create a playlist. So this is something that I like to do. I like to do the categories that Daryl was talking about. So I'll have one playlist for my Facebook Live Share Lights Camera Live. And it's all right here. And then if people don't want to go through all 28 episodes that I have, I could break it out by Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, any of that good stuff. That way they could go ahead and dive into it as much as possible. Now, if you're interested in actually editing the title tags, the descriptions, all of that good stuff after your broadcast or any of that, what you want to do is head on over to publishing tools. So I think I already have that tab open. All right, so you go to publishing tools, you go to your video library. From there, you could go ahead and click on edit video. And when that happens, you could go back in here. Let's say I had mentioned something new on the show, a new resource. I could go ahead and type that in here and I could go ahead and tag a page, right? Other things that you can do is the tags down here. So these are the categories. So I had Molly Mahoney on the show last week and we were talking about boss babes and bots and how they mean business and how you could use it. And so the tags for me was going to be about Facebook Messenger, entrepreneurship, as well as marketing. OK, so making sure that those tags are in there to take advantage of Facebook Watch and the features that it has. Now, if you want to add in captions, you can go ahead and click over to captions and you could click on generate. And what will happen is Facebook will go ahead and auto generate captions for you. Now, sometimes it could be buggy, especially if you have a very, very long broadcast. And in this particular case, I think Molly and I were geeking out for like a good 45 minutes. So you don't actually see my um, my captions auto generated here. Instead, I actually use a website called rev.com. And let's see if I could pop that up here real quick. So rev.com, R-E-V.com, they do a fantastic job in terms of doing captions and even transcriptions, and it usually costs you about a dollar a minute. So I usually get any of my broadcasts that I feel like had a ton of value. I definitely go ahead and make sure that I have those transcribed. It saves me from trying to create a new blog post. OK, so other things that you could do, again, you could tag other people in your posts. Daryl had talked about talked about this as well. Um, let me go to exit out of that. Let me go back to videos just in case, because if you want to create a featured video and I kind of skipped over this, but if you click on this edit, you could add a playlist. You could reorder playlist up here is your featured video. So you could change the featured video or if you don't want to have one, then just don't show a featured video. So those are some ways that you could go ahead and optimize your video. Now, if you want to embed this onto your actual website, what you do is you go back to publishing tools, click on edit video, and then from there, you'll see this nice little gear icon. And you'll just click on embed. Other things that you could do, Daryl is kind of talking about in terms of repurposing your video, you could download the actual broadcast that you did and then upload that over to YouTube. Just keep in mind that the YouTube audience, the way that they consume content is a lot different than how people on Facebook consume content. So you might wanna make a couple of edits, like snip out the beginning if you're saying hi to people all the time, okay? So having said that, let me go ahead and switch back. Stop sharing my screen. And let's see if we have any questions when it comes to Facebook video optimization and Daryl, feel free to come back on because I feel like we've just hit everyone up with like how to optimize your video, how to repurpose your video. So much goodness. And having said that, I mean, is there anything else that you want to add? And I'll go ahead and put myself on mute. That way we don't have the little audio.
what like when I was working with Saul, this was actually something that we really wanted to pound the pavement on. So I was working literally 25 to 30 hours a week to get all these videos in and out and, and you know, and out to the world and optimize and all that kind of stuff. It was a huge investment, you know, on his part to say, okay, I really want to attack this and dominate this. Now, of course, it's pretty linear, right? He fixes these cars, but he know he's really good at it and he really knows about it. So it's not like this is a video with, you know, a transcription, I'm gonna write out, I'm gonna write. You can rehearse it, sure, but start with what you know, start what's in your heart. When we do this, the other part of Stern Stormy in brand marketing is about bringing people in and giving them hope, right? That you are the solution to their problem. So start with what you know, that's what I would say. And if we were starting with videos and blogging and all that, start with what you know and start with what you love and talk about it and be excited about it. Marketing is theater. You're getting people excited about your gift to the world and what you have to have. just taking a peek at um, the questions in the comments. And so Jen, she says that my understanding is still that it's for big production peeps, probably paying for Facebook. I think she was talking about Facebook watch. Yeah, right now it is, it's the, it's the paid content creators, right? Um, that you see on Facebook watch, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't still optimize your video. Cause if you haven't noticed, if you watch a Facebook live video, what happens is that at the very end, you see suggested videos that also pop up. And that's definitely something that you want to take advantage of. Let's say someone is doing a mindset Monday marketing tip every Monday and they only do it for a minute. If they're only giving one minute of content, but then you come in under suggested as like, look, I'm going to give you the meat of all of this stuff. You're going to go ahead and steal those viewers as well. And that's going to be super important too. All right. So, do we have any other questions about SEO, websites, all that stuff? Because you, you have access to Daryl and it's now your time to go ahead and ask him questions. As recommended length of video is 10 minutes plus for live right. and pre-recorded. I will say for Facebook Live, yes, any time that you could go longer than 10 minutes, the better. Pre-record the video, that's over to you. <laughs> thing about blogging, you know, 600 to 800 oh. words, right? And I say, look, if you can write a master's thesis, literally a doctoral thesis on a topic, and we can divide that up and make, you know, a series of 20, 30 blog articles that are all 2000 words each, do it. Like literally back in the years ago, people looked at, you know, what was the number one blog, you know, on these topics in the searches and you looked at it and it was a darn well written, darn well researched, you know, literally had a bibliography, you know, in it, you know, article about something. So there's no, there's no, I would say of anything, no, 200 words isn't going to cut it. You know what I'm saying? Like a one minute video isn't going to cut it. I mean, you you have to put, you know, some content into this separate from your inbound, which is giving people the hope and desire in just 90 seconds or less to sign up for a webinar or to sign up for, you know, your ebook or something like that. Totally separate thing. This is where you get to show off your knowledge. So. Yeah. And it's, I love the fact that you asked that question, Cindy, about how long your videos could be because it also really depends on what your objective is because this today's webinar is talking about SEO and supercharging your website. It makes a lot of sense to have, have longer content on your website. However, if let's say you want to be the next YouTube star, right? You want people to continually consume and binge off of your content, which is why you see like the Amy Schmidt hours and you know, the rest of them doing shorter videos because the more views they get, the longer in the playlist, the better they're able to go ahead and convert those viewers into subscribers, right? So having said that, let's see, Savannah says, I missed the first few minutes about landing pages. Can we touch back on the first step before creating the video? Oh, and you're on mute, so one second. I, I unmuted myself. Okay. I should be on now. Okay, okay, Savannah. So what we were talking about is, for instance, Saul fixes cars, right? So we set up 60 landing pages, one for each and every type of car that there is that he can fix. Now, each one had original content 
And each one, you know, talked about how much he loved that particular type of car and some facts about it and all that kind of stuff. So th what are those are is our anchor pages. Let's say you you sold essential oils. I'm making something up. And there were all these different types of essential oils. Well, then you would have a landing page, something that, you know, that anchors to that particular product or service, right? Then you're blogging to, to show off that you know a lot about that particular topic. So depending on what it is that you do and what you know about, some people may not have or need, you know, 60 landing pages off their homepage. You know, it depends on the architecture of what you offer the world, what your products and services are and how we can architect. Yes. And I love that Savannah asked this question because Savannah just got a new job. Hey, hey. And she's working at a new company where it's it's actually in the marijuana industry because it's legal here in, here in the state of California. So looks sounds like you're going to be doing a lot of new stuff, Savannah. So I'm super excited for you. Okay. Um, Cindy says, I've been thinking about these epic posts a lot. Epic blog posts. What is your opinion on a combo post that includes text, Facebook Live, pre-recorded, and audio. My take would be break those out. You know, it could be an epic post, um, and then you could have, let's say, on your website, Cindy, you have a section that says that says videos, podcast, blog post articles, and then to what Daryl had mentioned earlier, you're in you're indexing and then you're interlinking the pages. Like I just geeked out, Daryl. Go ahead. I know you have a lot more to say. <laughs> about um well you know how should i i should have epic posts or shorter posts or longer videos or shorter videos your best marketing campaign is inside of you it's the architecture of what you know and again google is a search engine its job is to answer questions so you are the solution or you know how to do this so what is the question here's a quick one if you search for something ask google a question and see if you see any videos about it right and then do a local search and ask that question and see if you see any videos about it. If you don't see any, you could be the only one. You hearing me? Now that's what we call low hanging fruit because people say, but that's easy. You know, Bentley repair Englewood. Well, hardly anyone owns a Bentley here. So that's easy. Yeah, it's called low hanging fruit. It's called, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna dominate that. And guess how much a Bentley repair is? It can go up to 10,000, $12,000 a job. So yeah. We're going to have our three videos about repairing Bentleys that then we'll dominate. Do you understand? So starting with the low hanging fruit, the thing that nobody's talking about, but maybe five people a month search for. Well, guess what? I'd rather talk to four super qualified people that really want to, you know, that that would admire what I do and pay, you know, and admire my knowledge and want to communicate with it about than to go for something big and broad that is so big that you're going, my gosh, you know, how will we? Exactly. Yeah. So focus on areas that you'll have a quick win where there's low competition because you could absolutely dominate with the strategies and the techniques that we talked about in today's webinar. So bring on the low hanging fruit. I love that, Cindy. <laughs> OK, great. You guys, this has been an amazing hour. I can't even believe that it's been an hour. But thank you so much for joining us live. And if you're catching the replay, go ahead and you could still engage in the chat box. I think I'll still have access to it as well as, as Daryl. Um, but having said that, thank you all so much for joining us. Make sure to go ahead and click on the worksheets and the workbook to go ahead and fill that out. And Daryl, you have this amazing offer where people can go ahead and geek out with you a little bit more. So tell them about it. If you go to Stern oh, Storming. I'm here. There's a little delay. Yeah. There's a little delay. I'm here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so if you go to sternstorming.com and you fill out the form on there, there's six video lessons that go through what kind of what we are, we're just talking about. And I give everyone an hour with me. We can take a look at your website. We can take a look at your SEO. We can take a look at what you're doing and we can stern storm up what your next 50 blogs would be, what your next, you know, type of content would be. And I can take you through the system on how to do it. Also, if you're around Denver and you want to come out here in a week and a half, we are doing a three day live workshop called Stern Storming Live. It's not just me. It's the amazing Mythica. You, you want to duck your head in here? If you guys know Skin Wars, the reality show that's on Netflix, this is Mythica, the amazing body painter. She's going to be speaking on how to how to improve your own self image. 
tons of new speakers. I won't take up more time on it, but go to Stern Storming Live and you can join us either streaming on the internet or um, live. So I'm looking forward to Stern Storming with each and every one of you. I am an open book when it comes to digital marketing. Thank you, Stephanie. Oh, this has been amazing. Thank you much. Thank you so much for geeking out with us. And Mythica, that was so funny. You just popped out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, Cindy, again, for anyone that's wondering where the worksheets and the workbook is, um, up at the very top, if you see an avatar, you might be in the chat box, but if you click on that, it'll switch over and then it'll show the workbook, the worksheets, as well as the opportunity for you to go ahead and book your store, your store and stir, store and stack. Stern storming session. I'm sorry, Daryl. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you so much again and enjoy the rest of your week. Bye, everyone. Yay. And stop.